Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. Before we get started, um, we have two separate speaking sessions. I think everybody's clear we had two separate sign-up uh, lists out front. The first is just the general public speakers that would not be on the budget. And we only have one, uh, Mr. Vines, you're the only one speaking that's not on the budget item. The second hearing is a public uh, meeting which we are having for the budget only. So all these second, and I think we have like 22, um, that's on the budget for the county only, not matters that are not on the on the budget. Um, on the on both hearings, each speaker is time for three minutes. So you have a three minute um, block per speaker. Uh, on the um, public speakers, Henry, we only have uh, 30 minutes worth of speakers. Since you're the only one, that'll be short. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but on the uh, budget public uh, hearing portion, uh, we don't have a time limit, but we do have a limit of three minutes per speaker. Uh, nobody can speak more than once in either hearing, uh, and speakers must sign up and be on the list to be heard. Uh, is there anyone that did not sign up that wants to be heard that did not sign up on this list? Because I'll give you a few more minutes to sign up if you need to, because that was announced before the meeting, but not publicly. If everybody's good. We'll go with the list. Okay. The rest of the list I don't need to read to you because there are no additional speakers. Okay. Uh, I have the honor, uh, it says Steve Carter on your agenda. Uh, Steve is not with us except for Zoom, and he will attend by Zoom. Uh, with county commissioners, uh, if you are not present, you may not vote on an issue, uh, and that's prohibited by North Carolina state law. Um, so he will be present through Zoom, may be able to make comments. He's welcome to make comments as a commissioner. Uh, but will not be allowed to vote. Okay, I have the honor of uh, taking his place. He was gonna do the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. So if everyone will please bow your heads. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege and honor of having these meetings to be able to represent we commissioners, the county and the county residents and the residents to be able to, to attend both in person and by broadcast. We thank you for these opportunities which you have granted to us as citizens of this country and this state and this county. Heavenly Father, we ask that you lead us and guide us throughout these deliberations and lead us to do your will. We say all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay. Everyone stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is easier chairs are <laughs> sure. Mr. Vines, you're the only public speaker that has signed up. It's your time. And we're giving you two and a no, three minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Payson. My name is Henry Vines and I live in 3450 Eyes of the Drive in Snow Camp. 
I uh, just uh, wanted to come up and welcome Bill Lashley back to the board. Glad to see his face. His uh, answered prayers had come down. Uh, commissioners, I just there's a couple things I just uh, wanted to speak to you about tonight. Uh, in last last meeting, I didn't quite understand why we wouldn't adopt and get the the premium on the bond for two more million dollars. We've already approved nineteen million. What is two more million? But we can get rid of three problems of buildings that we have. Now we're going to be still have those three problems on the board to deal with. You're going to get the two million dollars from. Already hitting the fund balance. We can't keep on doing this. So I really don't understand why we didn't go on and get that. I don't know if there's a chance that we could go back and get that. But I mean, you already approved 19 million uh, to get premium. So it's it's going to be 170 million dollars in bond anyway. So I hope that y'all maybe consider that because I mean we need to get rid of these problems that we've got with these rules and we got to figure out a way to pay for them. And um, so that was my thing. The other thing I'd like to ask is that on the public comments, for years public comments were made and then after the public comment, ain't me is it? No. Uh, after public comment, the commissioners uh, would comment on what was what the, the citizens commented on. It's you know it's kind of bad when you have to sit here and wait for two hours or three hours to hear a response from the commissioners about something you are concerned about. And I would wish that y'all would just re revisit this policy and just take time to address the comments that are made during the public comment period. I appreciate your time, and we'll have a time tonight, and I'll see you a little later. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we need a uh, approval of the agenda. <coughs> I have a motion to second. All in favor of the agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Mendes and change. <coughs> now need a consent on the consent agenda. A so motion. I have a motion. Second. And second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The consent agenda passes. Guys, <coughs> uh, you younger folks, some of you were here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is going to be one of your faster meetings, except when people are talking. <laughs> okay, our next item is the public agenda, uh, or public hearing, rather. Uh, and I'm just going to go down the list, and we will take everyone. Mr. Chair, as I, think they we need a, I think we need a motion to open the public hearing. Correct. So moved. Do we have a second? second? I'm looking at Mr. Turner for a second hallway. <laughs> uh, all in favor of opening the public hearing, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We're now officially in the public hearing. Oops. Ed Priola. Good evening. I'm Ed Priola. I live in Mebane at 747 South 8th Street. The county manager's recommended budget provides some troubling insights to my perspective. To begin with, it's missing prior year budget comparisons. By contrast, there were just six compar there were six comparisons in fiscal year 2022, four in 2023, but just two last year. So well, this begs the question. Were the, were the omission of the prior year uh, comparisons dropped to obscure the county budgets uh, unjustifiably more and more expensive government? 
that the general government expenditure went up 127% over the last decade. That the tax department alone, expenditures went up 142% during that period. While human resources expenditures went up 249% over the past decade. That over the same period of time, inflation was just 32%. While growth, population growth stood at 17%. Neither of these, in my opinion, justify the ballooning cost of government at the county level. Take, for example, the library system. It employed 36.5, I'm guessing that's a, a half a, a part-time person, in 2022. And jumped to 49, according to the record, in 2023. We have just four libraries and two mobile units. So how do we justify having 10 folks on the payroll and the staff that's open, only open 10 hours a day for, uh, except for Sundays? More money and more people doesn't translate into better performance. In the 2023 merit pay, it was increased from 2% to 3%. That 50% increase in merit pay accomplished just a 13% reduction in the county-wide employee vacancy rate. More telling, in, in, is, more telling is that in the last year's, in last year's proposed budget, the conditions for <coughs> merit pay were, quote, provided departments meet 75% of their performance management goals in the previous year, and an evaluation was performed on an employee, unquote. Now this year, the only condition shown for merit pay is provided the department performs an evaluation on the employee, unquote. So what happened? What happened to the performance attainment goal, the 75% of the, the department's attainment goal? Likewise, should, why should every evaluated employee receive merit pay, including the low performers of merit pay, or, of low performers in their jobs? Moving forward, I urge this board to require publication of the actual performance of each department against its previously stated goals and eliminate the proposed 2% property tax increase. Four stars we can get into that by returning uh, to a 2% merit pay level and by bringing back the 75% performance goal attainment conditioned. And lastly, by restricting merit pay to the top 25% percent of performing employees. If everybody gets merit pay, it's not merit pay. In other words, merit pay for merit and a high quality return on every taxpayer dollar. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Capri, is it Rickley? Trying to read the handwriting. Each speaker, please, before your time starts, uh, announce your, as Mr. Um, Rolla did, your name, address, and I'd ask that you announce whether you're an Alamance County resident or not. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do apologize. My name is Capri Ricketts, Thank and you. there was a misunderstanding in terms of me making a comment. It was later addressed earlier that I'm going to just stay for the meeting and speak to the appropriate parties at another time. Thank you. Thank you. And I will apologize in advance for mispronouncing any name that I cannot read or that I just mispronounce. Gabriel Strickland. Gabriel, I think I got your name correct. Yes, right. you did. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Can I start now? Please. Hello, Commissioner. Commissioners, my name is Gabriel Strickland. Pull the mic a little closer to you, down to you. Okay. Is this better? Much better. Yep. Okay. That's okay. I'll, I'll just hold it. That's fine. <laughs> Hello, Commissioner. Just don't take the mic. <laughs> I won't. 
Hello, Commissioners. My name is Gabriel Strickland. I am a sixth grader at Elmance Virtual School. We heard that some of you have considered not funding our school. These are the reasons why you should reconsider. This school has some academic op opportunities, including AILA. Some of us have been working hard and dedicating our school year to get into AILA, like me, who has an A honor roll in a school year, all school year, to thankfully get in. If you don't fund the school, you will be taking Elmance Youth Leadership Academy away from me and my fellow peers. You also take away the opportunity to save, mon save you money. If you let go of the student cap, you will have to build less schools and save more money across the school system, not only with the virtual school. We are not just 210 students, but all of our parents, um, Alamance Virtual School community, teachers, graduating seniors, our taxpayers, and voters. We are a strong community that wants the school to stay open. Please take a good look and a hard listen to what we, sorry, and the ABSS community will be missing out if you decide to vote against funding our school. Thank you. And we thank you. You get extra points if you can get the mic. <laughs> thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you. Ms. Stewart? Is this okay? You're good either way. Well, <laughs> Thank you. Lil Store, Alamance County. Hello, Commissioners. My name is Lil Store. I am a sixth grader at Alamance Virtual School. I want to come here and speak with you about Alamance Virtual School and ABSS. We all know these means are about the approval of the ABSS budget that Dr. Harrison and the whole school board worked so hard to present to you all. I cannot speak on all the facts and figures because it's above my sixth grade advanced math level. Hopefully, one day, I might be able be the one standing here presenting the budget to you. Maybe I'll be sitting up there in your seat and someone will be presenting the, their budget request to me. I'm sure if given the opportunity to continue my education with Alamance Virtual School, this will be possible in the future. There are so many things that I can tell you about ABSS and my school ABS that cannot fit into numbers and charts. Alamance Virtual School gives us the ability to learn in a way that fits us best while keeping the money in ABSS public schools. The funds that are received for ABS students can help other financial needs in the district as Dr. Harrison has explained. ABS has built a community of local teachers, students, and families. We meet often to explore and support local attractions and businesses, all while building our friendships and dragon family. Our teachers and classmates are a part of ABSS. This keeps all of us connected and helps us build friendships and trust in the people we are around every day. I value our friendships. I also look up to all our teachers that makes us feel special every day. It's surely changed my life. Most of all, we embrace every student and family. I know the money has to be earned and doesn't just appear, but focusing solely on that and not thinking of the impact of every decision made is foolish. We are all worth a lot more than what is being asked from you. I'm asking for myself, all the students, teachers, and school board that you fund the budget as needed to keep all 38 ABSS schools open. We are not asking for anything more. Thank you. And yeah, we thank you. You did exactly right. You gave her five and she went by. <laughs> well spoken. Chris Smith. Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Chris Smith, and I live on Ivy Knoll Drive in Mebane. I am here today to ask you to vote for a budget that strengthens ABSS, not weaken, weakens it. My family has three students in ABSS, and we'll have another start in a few years. And I can tell you with the utmost confidence that our public schools are not failing. One of our children has dyslexia and currently has an A in every subject but one, and is very, very close in that one. She is thriving because of the support ABSS has provided. She is receiving EC services that are often difficult to get in private or charter schools. Another of our children started kindergarten the year the pandemic started. Her generation is arguably the worst off in terms of learning loss. She's made phenomenal growth the past two years. 
because of our excellent public school teachers. It is expensive to run a public school system, but there's good reason for that. Public school schools provide transportation to every student who needs it to and from their neighborhood. Very few charter or private schools do that. Every public school has a cafeteria that provides hot meals to students and participates in the free or reduced price meal program that I benefited from as a child. Most charter uh, and private schools use a meal delivery service and do not guarantee meals to poor children. You get what you pay for when it comes to educating children. The highest performing schools, whether they are public, private, or charter, are well funded. When adjusted for socioeconomic status, private and charter schools perform no better than traditional public schools. Public, public education works. Thank you. And we thank you as well. Emerson Campbell. Just take it down or what is easy for you? <laughs> Hi, my name is Emerson Campbell. I'm a fifth grader at Alamance Virtual School. I'll be a sixth grader in a couple of days. I'm also the youngest of six kids, so I pretty much have been in the Alamance Burlington school system for since birth. I've also pretty much been a member of the PTO at Yim Holt Southern Middle School, Southern High School, Southern Athletics, and the Alamance Virtual School since I was born. I learned I learned to count by counting box tops for education. I learned money. <laughs> I'm sorry, somebody made me laugh. No, you're, you're good, just take your time. I learned money management at fall festival. I learned organization at movie nights. I learned public speaking at school-sponsored open mic nights. I learned advocacy at the school board meetings. And now here I am learning government and economics while speaking for our county's students and educators. So I feel like I have learned a lot in my short 10 years. The most important of all things that I've learned, though, is how to care for our community. At Alamance Virtual School, we do that when we come together for meals every month at local restaurants, when we learn about our county's rich culture on dragon adventures to local historic sites and landmarks, when we meet up for hikes and kickball games at local parks or roller skating and bowling at local businesses. All my older brothers and... and all my older brothers and sisters have been active vol volunteers and leaders with the ALA team. I, too, strive to be an ALA when I reach seventh grade because I know how much leadership is important to growth. That's why I'm here tonight asking you, our community leaders, to fully fund the budget presented by Dr. Harrison. Thank you for your time. And we thank you. That'll help me speak easier. Thank you. Is it, is it Dang, D-A-N-G? Did I pronounce that correctly? Thank you. If I can reach this, okay. Um, hi, good evening. My name is Louisa Dang, and I live in Elon, Providence Place. I have two children and who attend the Almonds Burlington Public Schools, and I really don't like public speaking. But I knew I had to speak up tonight because my daughter tells me that two teachers from her school probably won't be coming back in the fall and that they are not going to have a librarian at her school. She goes to a Western high school. Um, she also told me a couple weeks ago when we had all the heavy rain that the roof in their gym was leaking and there was water all over the bleachers. And in one of her classes, a puddle had formed on a chair that one of the students accidentally sat down on. Of course, the class thought this was funny, but I didn't think it was that funny. So in the Alamance County Manager's recommended budget for fiscal year 2024-2025, it talks about education being one of the county's five strategic pillars. The others are public safety, 
smart development, accountability, and quality of life. And under quality of life, it talks about maintaining the quality of, our, of life in our community by supporting our unique assets. And I would argue that our educators and our children are our most important, or one of the most important assets in our community. So in that same vein, I would argue that all of the other four pillars, public safety, smart development, accountability, and quality of life, all, for the most part, rely on a solid foundation of education. An educated workforce draws companies and higher paying jobs to the area. Excellent schools attract young professionals and families. And well-funded schools provide resources like after-school care, guidance counselors to prepare kids for college, extracurricular activities, which also look good to colleges, and so many more opportunities that will steer our children in the right path. Right now, though, our schools are suffering, and this fifth pillar of education is it's underfunded, it's damaged right now, and in danger of collapsing. So we ask you, parents and educators, the community, we're looking to you, our county commissioners, to take action when you vote to pass the budget on June 16th. We'd like to celebrate you as champions for the children of Alamance County. Thank you, their time. Um, so we ask you to do several things. If there's free money on the table, make sure you take it. Apply to the Renew Schools Prize by June 13th, the deadline. Um, work with the Board of Education, form a joint county commissioners and Board of Education task force. Um, commit to a school bond on the ballot in 2025. Stand up in Raleigh for Alamance kids. Issue resolutions against school vouchers. Save positions in our schools and make sure our school buildings are safe. As you know, our kids deserve all this and more. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you. And we thank you as well. Matthew Dobson. Good evening. I'm Matthew Dobson, 1895 Wheeler Bridge Road in Burlington. And uh, appreciate being here tonight, commissioners, and this time. I'm here representing the Alamance Virtual School Parent Teacher Organization, and my wife is a teacher in, uh, at the Alamance Virtual School. So um, I thought I'd bring a little bit different perspective on the virtual school. There's been a lot of discussion over the last several months about what the virtual school is, what it isn't, and I wanted to focus on just three areas with you this evening in this short period of time. Um, first off, the Alamance Virtual School actually benefits the budget. So if you think about it, it's a virtual school. So a virtual school has no physical assets or very few physical assets. Um, it has no uh, brick and mortar school, obviously, no transportation costs, no nutrition costs. Um, and so if you look at the overall budget of, you know, the overall budget, not just the county budget, you're looking at $300 million plus, and you look at the physical costs in that budget, you're looking at about $110 million. So, in short, the Alamance Virtual School is at least 30% more cost effective than a brick and mortar school. So yeah, we're still getting a lot of the revenues that come along with a normal brick and mortar school. And I think that's very important because obviously everybody's talking about money and we need more money. The virtual school actually helps to support a, a smaller budget uh, or, or provide more funding into other areas. And I think that's important. Um, the virtual school had been capped in the past. The virtual school could, could grow and grow and grow and still at that lower rate of cost. And I think that's important. We need a diversified approach, uh, similar to charter schools or CTEC or whatnot. The virtual school also offers an alternative. To, and as you can see by the students who spoke be, before me, um, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity for certain types of students that are looking for that virtual, um, that virtual environment. Um, and it's a compliment. So, um, so I think that's important to think about. Uh, I base those figures on the uh, budget amendment from fiscal year last year, but I assume that the percentages would be very similar to about 30% savings. Um, the second area I wanted to focus on is performance. So there's been discussions about the performance of the virtual school. So we're just getting and finishing up our tests, but in general, we the virtual school is meeting and exceeding its performance growth uh, areas. Uh, in the middle school reading, they're 8% they're above the targeted academic growth rate. They're in science, eighth grade, 9% above. In high school biology, 15% above. In the high school math, 54% above. And in the high school math, 47% above. So as this school is maturing and becoming really a foundation in Alamance County, 
the education system that's been put in place is now showing great success. And I think that's worth considering as well. So I appreciate the time this evening, and I hope you will consider the information we have submitted. I've provided these uh, handouts and prints to everyone, including emailing Commissioner Carter. Thank you, sir. And we thank you, and we'll return your phone call. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Teresa Zedron, thank you. Good evening, commissioners. I'm Teresa Drawn. I live in Burlington, um, and I wear many hats in my life. I'm a member of Down Home North Carolina and a substitute teacher for ABSS, but the most important hat I wear is being a mother. I have four kids, and they all attend ABSS schools. Actually, one of them is a rising kindergartner. Um, they're absolutely my heart and my soul. There, there is, in fact, a county full of families who are concerned about the state of our district. We demand safe buildings for our children, and we demand the staff cuts to end. I'm reminded of a comment the chairman of this board made during our two-week disruption at a specially called meeting. Commissioner Paisley made a point to request no additional meetings be held at school facilities due to him being ill after said meetings. But these conditions are and were acceptable for our children, teachers, and staff. They don't get a choice in this. The state of our district is an emergency. Tonight, I'm asking this board of elected county commissioners to help. Please apply for the Renew Schools Prize. This could potentially give us millions of dollars in funding that is much needed. The deadline for this application is June 13th. Please don't leave this funding on the table when we need it the most. This community is looking to this board to fight for us in Raleigh. We would like you to issue a resolution against vouchers. We cannot afford to lose any more funding. Please, commissioners, take this seriously. Our children's health and safety is riding on this. Alamance Burlington School System deserves a generational investment. No more Band-Aids. We thank you. No, Barbara Crook. Good evening. Uh, I'm Barbara Crook. I live in Burlington. Um, I graduated from Western High School in the first graduating class, 1963. Um, my two grandsons attended Elmance County ABSS schools. They're both students now at NC State, and uh, they also graduated from Western. I'm just, um, I guess I didn't realize how bad things had gotten. And when you consider that the University of North Carolina uh, is the first public university in the country, I'm just appalled that you know, our schools are in the situation that they are. And I hope that you all will uh, reconsider and fully fund what Dr. Williams has requested. Thank you. Yeah, we thank you. We're going to take a five minute break and we'll see if I can get rid of this blessing. Sorry. We're in recess for five minutes. Deborah Smith. Deborah Smith. We turn this microphone. Hey, Deborah Smith. Deborah Smith. Hey, Colleen King. That's her, John, in the wheelchair. Are you Miss Smith or Miss King? Thank you so much. Miss King, thank you. I am Deborah Smith. I've lived in Burlington for 25 years until uh, last October. Well, I still live in Burlington, but. 
I lived down the street from Newland Elementary School until then. And in the last, since October, I've been in a group home on Garden Road for physically challenged people. And um, my child attended school in Guilford County instead of school here, but he always went to public school. And I wouldn't have it any other way. I wanted him to go to public school. I didn't want him to be treated differently or anything. So anyway, he did real well in school. And, uh, you know, I was real proud of him. And I, uh, I was in the PTA. I tried to do what I could. I worked a lot, but I tried to do what I could when he was in school. And I kept reading things about the schools. I know, I know it must be a tremendous job to be an educator or to work in the schools in any manner because I know anything that people do, even if you're a custodian and whatever you do, has got to be a big job. And when you're working with kids, it's such a tremendous responsibility too. You know, and I just know it's got to be so much. So I would really think that we need to do all we can to, to support the staff of these schools as much as we can and to make sure the buildings are safe and healthy, you know. And we've had so many things happen in our schools this last year, two years. And, you know, I just hope we can get the money, find the money, go after the free money that's available and get these schools fixed and keep our staff so they aren't moving off to other places, you know, so we can keep them here and keep them with the kids they know and the kids that know them because that's important too. So I hope. We won't leave any money on the table, and we'll renew the school prize by 613. I think that's very important. We need to keep money we can get. If we can't get that money, I hope we commit to a plan to fix buildings and a comprehensive building study out of county funds. And I hope that we can save positions and safe buildings stand up to Raleigh for the elements kids. I think if we can do these things, maybe we can start elements County having a better reputation for their schools. Thank you. And we thank you. Okay. Lily, and I'm gonna to try to spell the last name if possible. Or are you Lily? Pauline Kane. Okay. Thank you. An awful lot of K's in, in your name. <laughs> yeah, there are. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, good evening. My name is Colleen King. I live in Burlington. I and many other community members are concerned about county-based funding for our ABSS schools. Obviously, if you, as you've heard, um, other members of the um, Down Home North Carolina and Public Schools Strong team speaking tonight um, I am interested in uh, making sure that we don't leave any money on the table and that we um, try to apply for the Renew School Prize by the June 13th deadline. I believe information has been emailed, but I'll also email after this meeting so that you have the information. Um, and we'd really love for the county commissioners to come together and to apply for that money so that, you know, we can fix these school problems that are ongoing and avoid any further disruptions. Um, I have a fifth grader at E.M. Holt Elementary and a seventh grader attending Southern Middle School. I'm a community member and I have lived in Alamance County for over 20 years. Um, I think, as others have said, um, we need both safe buildings and to save these much needed educators for our children. Um, the support service staff, you know, librarians and counselors, you know, they've had a huge impact on my children. Um, instilling the love of reading and doing the uh, Battle of the Books program are uh, two, you know, things that have been instrumental for my ch children growing up. Um, I see and hear wonderful things about our schools. We have caring teachers who do heroic jobs, and I'm so grateful for every employee of our school system who's looking out for our kids and doing as much as they can without enough resources. Um, so much of what is going on right now at ABSS, I think, comes back to the lack of resources. And so, again, I just ask that the county commissioners work to um, put in the application for the Renew Schools Prize by the June 13th deadline. Thanks very much. And we thank you as well. Is Camille your daughter? Or 
Okay. Are you guys kin to each other? We are. I'm. This is. I'm Camille Nicholson. This is Lily. Um, she was before me on the list, but I'll just give her a few seconds of my time to begin with. Thank you. Okay. I'm an. I'm Lily. I live at Hall River. I'm an AIG student, and um, my school, Audrey Garrett Elementary, is falling apart. We've had a recent budget cut, and our performing arts teacher has been cut. We do not like it, and we feel like if the vouchers could be fought against, it would solve some of the current problems we have with the budget. Um, thank you. And we thank you as well. So I'm Camille Mickelson. I am Lily's mom. I also have a pre-K student that was going to be in kindergarten next year at Audrey Garrett um, Elementary, not middle school, thank goodness. Um, and I wanted to stand before you today to tell you about how I feel about the way schools are happening and what the projected future is for our school system. And I'm scared, I'll be honest. I'm a former classroom teacher. I never taught in North Carolina. I left the profession before we moved out here in 2022. But if I hadn't, I would be leaving now. It, that's the, the honest truth. I would not continue in this district. I would go to Orange County, Guilford County, Durham County, Chatham County. Um, I also want to make sure that you take note of how much our community cares about education. I think I've only heard one person talk about anything besides education up here. And look at all these kids that are here standing up for their own education. I feel like that's, that's pretty stellar. Good job, you guys. Um, a few weeks ago, I argued against funding the virtual school because I didn't want our theater teacher to be um, cut from the program, but I changed my mind. We shouldn't have to choose between a theater teacher at an elementary school and a virtual program that allows students who need an alternative setting to get what they need. That gives them a different environment. Maybe it's temporary, maybe it's permanent. You don't know what they're going through until you put yourself in their shoes, until you exercise empathy. The Bible likes to call it compassion. You don't know what they need. So take a walk in someone's shoes. Um, I just want to end with, while some people would choose to starve government functioning or choke out democracy, and others would steal from the poor to give the rich to give to the rich, such as with the current voucher system, where there are no longer income requirements and anyone of any income can use taxpayer money, my money, that I worked hard for, they can take it away from my children and send their kids that already have more than my kids have to a private school. I choose to stand up for my children. I choose to stand up for our children. They're all of our children because if we don't stand up for them, they're not gonna be our kids anymore. They're gonna grow up to be adults and they're gonna go away. They're gonna leave. No one's gonna to wanna to stay here. I choose to stand up so that our children can thrive. Please fight against the vouchers on our schools. And we thank you. Is that Ebron Hennix? Welcome. Good evening. <clears throat> my name is Ebony Penix. I um, live in Green Level, and my kids go to Pleasant Grove Elementary. Um, as you are well aware, many community members are concerned about county-based funding for our ABSS schools. The families we are connected with want to make sure we both have safe buildings for our children and that we save as much needed educator positions. Um, I am the regional organizer here at Down Home, North Carolina, um, and I do a lot of work with Public School Strong. Uh, we are connected with, we represent uh, 173 community members who are united and have already taken action to make sure our schools have county funding they need. 
We also are in conversation with 4,962 people who are also concerned about community issues like funding public schools. It's easy as one, two, three. Alamance County Commission, stand up for Alamance kids. Safe school buildings, all school, safe school buildings for all kids. Make a generational investment in safe and healthy schools, safe positions, and safe school buildings. Our kids deserve it all. We are asking you to apply for the free money, um, the Renew Schools Prize by 613 deadline. Also, if you don't get that free money, can you commit to uh, uh, plan to fix the buildings? And then also save the positions and safe buildings. Stand up to Raleigh for Alamance Kids. What I just read to you was an email that I sent to you guys on Friday afternoon. Um, so you do have that information. And we would really appreciate it if you would open those emails up and, and, and agree to a time to just sit down with us so we can talk about it. We don't have to be against each other. We can figure this thing out. Um, these kids do deserve better. Uh, at the last county commissioner meeting, it really broke my heart to see some of the kids from AVS get up there and really just tell how hard it is for them to go to a regular school. If that works for them, they definitely deserve that. Um, also, the vouchers are, I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. I mean, um, I, the last time we were at the county commissioner meeting, I had to pick my daughter up from school early because the power was out, and they gave them hand sanitizer, not the power, sorry, the, the water was cut off, and they gave them hand sanitizer, and my son's classroom has 18 kids in it, and they gave them 12 bottles of water, so... 12 of them got to drink water, and after they used the restroom, they got to rub hand sanitizer on their little dirty hands. Um, it's unacceptable. It's not okay. Uh, we've talked to a lot of people, and they agree with us. So we represent them all here today. So we are asking you guys to please do not let that free money go by, at least apply for it. And also, if that doesn't work out, find another way to fund that building study. Thank you. Yeah, we thank you. Ms. McKenzie. McKenzie. He's like Aretha McKenzie. Not here. Peter Norcom. Peter, I see you here. He leaves. Oh, Peter. Good evening. Um, I, my name is Peter Morecambe. I live at 474 Thompson Road, Graham. Now, you, you have wonderful patients. You have a procession of people here coming, demanding more money. And I'm going to suggest to you there's better ways uh, which don't have just a simple solution. If you take the schools, for example, we've been throwing more and more money at the schools for the last 20 years, and the schools got worse by objective measurements from the Department of Public Instruction. Not me saying that. You can see the performance declining relative to other school districts. Now, if we just keep throwing money at it, I'm sure it'll continue to get worse. Um, what do I mean by... More, we need more creative management, in not just in the schools, probably in other departments as well. But we had somebody here already talking about the potential of virtual schools. This is Matt Dobson. Um, that would be one idea. Another idea would be something that Dr. Harrison implemented in Cumberland County, where he softened the rigid, the rigid bands of districting and allowed parents to attend or students to, pen, to attend schools that were not in their geographic district. Now, only 15% of those students took advantage of that, but it, it takes an, uh, it, it's a very much appreciated by parents. And if I'm, um, Dr. Harrison will be able to correct me if I've misremembered the facts, but that's how I remember it. Uh, another thing that would be very helpful would be to ask the simple question, how is it that a charter school can educate a child for $3,000 less than the ABSS with its much bigger size and advantage of scale, and yet they can't get it done at the same price as charter school? We need to answer that question. How is it that charter, little tiny charter schools are more efficient than ginormous Alamance Burlington school system? And 
Thank you very much for listening. And we thank you as well. Ms. McKenzie was a name that we skipped. Uh, is she st still not here? All right. Um, Ms. Burke Skull, we've seen you before. Indeed you have, sir. Good evening, board. First off, Mr. Lashley, I would like to say how pleased we all are to see you back in your rightful seat. You, I'm so glad you're well. Uh, Medora Burke Skull, uh, I live in Mebane, North Carolina. Uh, I'm here tonight representing Alamance Burlington Association of Educators. I wanted to take a moment to let you on the board know that we here in Alamance County are watching you and we see you and we see those of you who are going out of your way uh, to stand up for our county. We see those of you who aren't. Uh, the 23,000 ABSS students and their families see you. I sat through a county commissioner's meeting last month and I was extremely disappointed as a taxpayer in this county to hear my elected officials and the county manager use their position of power to drag down public schools. Um, some of you are working to establish professional courtesy and a close working relationship with our school board. And it ebbs and flows, but I think it's got to be the right way to lead. Uh, please figure out a way to behave as a professional with common goals for the betterment, betterment of our county as opposed to playing politics with our kids. We familiar with public education are all too familiar with doing more with less. Um, I heard the previous speaker talk about how can charter schools do so much more with less. It helps if you don't have to feed the kids. It helps if you have you are significantly higher than the poverty rate of the community in which you serve. It helps when you don't have to transport the kids. Uh, it helps when you don't have to deal with schools that have 90 to 100% student body on the free and reduced lunch uh, list. So, I mean, he's got a valid question, but boy, do we have answers. Our position as an organization in the spring has been that cuts hurt our kids. Um, I want to talk about a different role that I play in the community. I serve as a scoutmaster for a local scout troop, and I take groups of kids from uh, public schools camping regularly. And these kids all go to ABSS schools, and they are constantly in conversation around the campfire about all the things they're into these days. Um, they're all into Battle of the Books, and they talk a lot about a book called Never Eat Fried Worms, which sounds horrifying. Uh, they're in chess clubs. They're on rival school soccer teams and cross country teams. They're, on, they're from schools across the district. They're in band and they're constantly fighting over who's going to be first chair, even though they don't have that in middle school. Uh, they grouch about the bathroom policy in the middle school being too strict. They swap all their triumphs and tribulations. And every time I hear them, I'm struck by an overwhelming feeling that these kids are are absolutely thriving in our ABSS public schools. They are nicer to one another than we ever were. Uh, they have stronger confidence in their own abilities and their ability to shape the future than my, than my generation ever did. Uh, and their conversation is never about what members of this board and community, community would often have you feel, that our schools are failing. Um, ooh, that's the end for me. Uh, please fund our schools. We thank you. Thanks, guys. Dan Engel. My name is Dan Engel. Thank you, uh, Chair Paisley. Uh, 6388 Rasco Road, Burlington, North Carolina. And I'm an Alamance County resident, have been for 50 years. Uh, it's an honor to be here before you, Chairman Paisley, and the board tonight to speak a few minutes about our school system, if I may. You know, it's been a couple of weeks ago, and, and Sheriff Johnson stood uh, before you and made the comments. Said, "Look, you know, we're not a small county anymore, folks. We've got needs." Uh, and he talked about the fact uh, public safety. He has needs. Uh, when he, he talked about education, he brought up education. We have needs, and we're looking to you. Listen, I've been in your seat, uh, Chairman Paisley. I've been uh, uh, in Mr. Carter's seat. Uh, for, for several years, I know what you're going through right now. It is tough. There's been a couple times when I had to think very closely about what I was going to do concerning the school system. Back in 2005, 
we fully funded because at that time we were we had teachers going out the door because uh, uh, they were making more money at these adjacent counties. So uh, we were able to get the pay up to where uh, we weren't losing them like we were in uh, 2015. Uh, we fully funded the school system. Dr. Harrison was our superintendent. And as he was leaving, I said, is that enough, Dr. Harrison? He said, I think that'll be enough. Uh, so sometimes you need to raise taxes, unfortunately, in order to fund it. If you look at the buildings that we have right now, you know, it's a mess. Uh, uh, Y'all have faith in, uh, in our new person looking after the buildings, uh, Greg Hook. I have faith in him. Uh, we're going to get you a good superintendent. We've got 30, 34 applications. I've been pouring through them, and I will continue to do so. But there's some great ones uh, in there, and we'll, we'll do our best to get the very best. That last meeting we had, the budget meeting, that was a great meeting. Chairman Paisley, you brought up about the Title I schools and the failures. That was a great point because when you've got kids that are poor, when you've got kids that maybe they can't speak your language in the schools, uh, when you've got kids that it's grandma and grandpa that are raising them rather than a mom and dad and grandpa and grandma's got some age on them, we're going to have uh, problems sometimes with the test scores. Pam, you know that well. Uh, and that's what we're seeing with these Title I schools. A lot of times these teachers, they are the mom and daddy when they come into the school system. I mean, the kids don't get to eat a lot of times unless they eat at the public schools. There's so many things that the public schools do that charter schools do not do. And we're looking at 20-some thousand kids in this county. I'm a product of the public schools, and I would think every one of you are. So I encourage you to use your heart and your mind, think closely, and pass our budget. I want to say one thing about AV, uh, AVS, the, the virtual school. Uh, the gentleman did a great job bringing uh, the things up. He, he, he forgot one, though. How about the power and the gas and the things that we save but not using those also? I guess maybe you could consider that in brick and mortar. But it is a savings for those 200 kids. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you as well. Henry Vines. And he does get a second shot because it cannot be on the topic that he did previously. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Paisley. My name is Henry Vines, 350 Isley Drive. Commissioners, um, I'm going to come before you in a different light. Um, this budget that's been presented is an increase. It's not a decrease. It's not a defunding. And uh, for people to step here and say you're not fully funded, well, we are fully funded. We've funded what's been asked for. The thing that's bothering me is that I know County Manager Hyde, your, she has worked hard in trying to get this budget and form it in a way that it wouldn't raise our property taxes so much. We went two cent, but we're using seven and a half million dollars out of the fund balance. That's three cents on the property tax. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Paisley, you shortly remember this in 2012 when we kept using the fund balance by large amounts, six million, eight million, seven million. We got so low that the state sent us a letter saying you got to do something. We were hit, I think Mr. Engel was on that board as well, with a five cent increase in tax on property taxes just to go toward the fund balance. We've reached our fund balance, and we've got it where it needs to be right now to 20%. That's supposed to be for the emergencies. It's not supposed to be there to balance your budget. I have said this for the last 15 years, and I don't know why we want to continue to do this. I know nobody wants a property tax, but if you want to increase the budget, you got to increase the funds. And the funds ain't there except one way. That's through property taxes and sales tax. I still want you to go after that quarter cent sales tax. It could sure help us out a whole lot. But I thank you for what you've done, Ms. York, and I appreciate it. But don't let us slide down that road and get in the hole again. Because next year, we're looking at a three three cent increase in property taxes because you're going to make up at seven and a half million that you used 
Plus, you're not going to add anything like we've been adding. Our sales taxes are dropping. Our percentages are dropping. So, folks, we've got to do something. We've got these buildings that need fixing. And for folks to say that, that the county commissioners are not funding, $20 million extra, over $150 million that was approved and spent on buildings, some of these buildings, that some of this stuff that was done was not necessary. Those are the things that need to be done. Thank you for your time. And we thank you. Sammy Moser. Looks like this is a front row calling line. <laughs> thank you, commissioners. I'm Sammy Moser. I uh, live on Maple Avenue. That's in Alamance County. I just want to briefly thank each of you for the hard work you do. I uh, especially want to uh, recognize uh, Commissioner Lashley for being here, and I know you've been through some issues, and I really appreciate you coming out and working for our citizens. I want to just congratulate and brag on these students over here, these young students who come down and speak, and uh, I bet most of you probably make A and B on a roll, and I'm, I'm going to brag <laughs> on you. That's pretty special. I guess one question is, if we have... Uh, Group. Usually we have maybe 2,000, 2,500 students who can make A or B honor roll every, every grade. Why can't more of our students make A and B honor roll? It may not be all about money. I think it's a lot to do with parents and leadership in the home. Um, years ago, we at uh, Alabama Civitan Club did a lot of work, raised a lot of money to revitalize the EM Holt field was uh, in disarray. And uh, I'm proud that Alamance Civil Dance Club, every year we give two scholarships to students at Southern Alamance. And so I'm certainly interested in our students in our schools and what they do and our teachers. But I think we also need to let our students know if we raise taxes too much and too often, our young students, unfortunately, are going to have to pay taxes as you get older and get out of school. So we want to keep that in mind also. Don't raise our taxes too much. Let's make sure that the money that is spent in our school systems is spent adequately. That's, that's what I want to ask you tonight. Thank you for your time. Again, thank you for everything you do. Thank you, sir. Sandy Ellington Graves. Ms. Graves, you were not on the front row. Are you allowed to speak? <laughs> that was supposed to be funny. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I said that. you were not on the front row. Are you allowed to speak? If you'll <laughs> allow me. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Good evening. On behalf of the Board of Education, I want to thank you for the opportunity given to ABSS to share our budget presentation with you at the work session last week. I hope Dr. Harrison, Ms. Johnson, and Mr. Hook were able to offer clarity in our $10.3 million request. Our request reflected $1.4 million in legislative impacts, which we do not control, $1.6 million in charter school growth, and $4 million in increased utility, excuse me, increased utility bills across 38 campuses. These, are, these th three things alone total $7 million, or 68% of our request. The remaining ask reflects our expansion budget for technology, preventive maintenance, a significant custodial increase, and our virtual school. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the $7.6 million in cuts that impact numerous positions and programs across the district. Without <coughs> these cuts, our request would have been $18 million. I recognize the challenging task before each of you, balancing a budget, managing the tax rate, and supporting the important work of our county. Our tax rate is currently the 13th lowest among all 100 counties, yet our population growth marks the second highest among neighboring counties. Our per pupil spending in Alamance County ranks 51st in the state, yet our district is the 14th largest school district. As you continue your budget work, I remind you of a statement taken directly from our Alamance County webpage. 
Education is important to every community, to every person of every age. Education is of primary importance in Alamance County. As a school board member, as a parent, as a local business owner, and as a lifelong Alamance County resident, I completely agree. ABSS is excited and committed to public education, the opportunity and the investment in our young people. We will continue to advocate for our students and our staff as we focus on working collaboratively with the Board of Commissioners and this community to invest in our young people because public education matters. Thank you for your time and thank you to all of those here tonight to advocate for our young people. And we thank you. And Ms. Graves is the chair of the school board. Thank you. If these are all the public speakers. Um, and so we'll move on to, at this point, the county attorney's report, if any. What is your name? Okay, come forward. I, it's not on my list. The, what, I, what I apparently I have is the list of those that signed up here. Not the, so come on out. And I'll add your name to the list. And thank you for speaking up. Give me your name again, please. Jennifer Gauls. D-O-S-S. G-A-U-Z as in zebra, E as an elephant. All right. I live on Gibsonville, Ossipee Road, and I've resided in Alamance County my entire life, third or fourth generation, I believe. Um, I'm tired. I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but Mr. Daniel told me that squeaky wheel gets the grease, so here I am. I have contacted the sheriff's office repeatedly about issues that have happened. I've been ignored repeatedly. I have about 23 pounds of documentation, not counting the digital, of issues that I've had. On November 17th, 2023, I was contacted by Deputy Nicholas Gray Stone and Deputy, I believe, Teresa Wood, and I was told that I needed to drive across the county in the middle of the night. They stated that my grandmother had allegedly called 911 stating that two toddlers were missing out on Comsport, off Comsport Road. Um, there was no drones used for that search. There wasn't a search at all, actually. And when I got there, what I discovered, her house was awful. The pestilence, it was unlivable, basically. I was told the APS would have a report filed. I even went there and spoke to Crystal Clay myself. Nothing was done. This house is, I filled a half a dump truck in less than three days with my adult children and I cleaning, only to discover that there was never a 911 call made. Her, um, I believe it's Ms. Shields with Alamance Central Communications, there was no 911 calls made on November 17th to 4780 Barnhart Lane. So I'm not, under, I don't understand. I have my suspicions as to why this was done. It's basically um, something that has been going on since approximately November 17th, 2017, and for which that is an issue in Orange County. And I spoke to the sheriff and Curtis Morris about this individual. He works for the state. It was discovered he had hacked into my Google account and has been watching my every move for five years. Deputy Brinkley refused to file any kind of charges, even though I believe that's a federal felony. But this is basically my 911 calls regarding issues that have been happening at my house. Here is the transcript for the call from Deputy Stone. And there's another concerning issue because I called 911 because my grandmother's behavior was erratic. I didn't understand it. I could not bring her back to the current time. Like it was later discovered, I believe she was acting. But I contacted Alamance Central Communications to speak to the deputies. I spoke to a magistrate about having her committed to get the help she needed and was denied that. I spoke to the mobile crisis unit. They never bothered. And this is all over... I believe November 17th through the 21st. But see, the issue is there is no 911 or central communications contact from my numbers as well. 
but they're right here on my phone. Okay, I'm really sorry. One, this is not on budget. Two, you really need to be speaking uh, soon to law enforcement. I've tried that repeatedly. This has been going on for five years. I'm dying. I don't have that kind of time left. Yeah, and it's, I don't so know I don't, what, if anything, I mean, I've we emailed can, y'all repeatedly, can do for you. And I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. I mean, I've been advised by FBI intake agent, Jennifer or something, in Charlotte, that I needed to file a lawsuit because that appeared for unequal, under unequal protection under the law and color of law, because I've also been falsely arrested on three different occasions because this employee well, works for I the state. I think they gave you good advice. Seek, seek uh, legal advice. See, I've already spent about 20 grand and it was discovered that Mr. Dickerson is actually related to this individual. So a bar complaint was made and the order for which my arrests were yeah. made was appears to actually have been forged. Okay, you're so. out of, and I again apologize, you're out of order. You should have talked during the first public speaking event. This is not on, on the budget. Um, and I don't know, as a county commissioner, what I could do for you if, if I think you're addressing the wrong board. Okay, I don't know who else, because I've contacted the sheriff's office repeatedly, and I'm not getting anywhere. And it's also my daughter that is believed to have been recruited as, by the SRO as a confidential informant. Okay, thank you. So, thank you. Okay, county attorney. Um, uh, just want to... I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. Excellent, thank you. We have a motion to close the public hearing. Second. have a second. All in favor? the father saying aye, aye. Any opposed? We are now out of the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Uh, now, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Um, so several of the speakers tonight addressed um, the U.S. Department of Energy's Renew America's School Prize. I just wanted to let the board know that we've had a chance to do some quick research on that. Um, it appears the speakers are correct. Those applications are due June 13th. However, according to the website outlining the process for applications for that, um, the LEA, so the local educational agency, the schools would have to be the ones to apply for that grant. The county's not eligible to apply. So I just want to make sure the board is aware that the county's not eligible as an applicant. But I do think it might be an opportunity for the schools. And that's all I have. And we thank you. Folks that are leaving, we will likely have uh, county commissioner comments. Don't guarantee that, but you may want to hang on just for a minute or two. Okay. I have no report this evening. As the county manager, no report. County commissioners, Ms. Thompson. Hey, what, while you're pulling your things out, Mr. Carter, you've been awfully quiet. Do you want to say anything? She's not listening. <laughs> Mr. Carter, are you muted? There he is. Hey, it took me a second or two to get up. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Here you fine. I'm unmuted. We can hear you perfectly. Steve, go ahead and speak. Um, right. I, I've been listening tonight, and uh, I just I just wish our our we had a better way of informing our students. So much of uh, so much of what was asked for tonight. has been covered in conversations we've had before. Um, so much has been provided to the school. So, I mean, there were, somebody made a comment about roofs leaking. We've had roofs money sitting at ADSS for a number of years that wasn't used to repair roofs. I don't like to bring that back up. We've covered that. It's been brought up. Apparently, there are people that still don't know the funds were there. We've made, it, made the money available for for um, roof repair for six of the 
seven schools that were addressed uh, on the uh, press conference that the schools called. Uh, the seventh school, they hadn't asked for any money for. So I don't know how we get that message out any better than we already have. It's been in the papers. It's been addressed in our meetings. Um, historically, we've been giving money to the schools. In many years, we've given them everything they've asked for. So um, last year, we gave them what they asked for. Let's see where we are now. Um, this is going to be a tough budget. I think everybody realizes that. Try and throw another extra $10 million in there is about four cents on the county tax rate of what we're already talking about, which would make, if we use the current budget so suggestion from the county manager, looking at a six cent increase in the county tax rate. So that's a struggle. That's a real struggle for us to try and figure this out. I just hope people will be, our citizens will be cognizant of the fact that we're trying to do everything we can to provide them with everything they need to get that departments need to get the job done and have the least possible impact on our citizens. So I thank you for the opportunity to make a comment tonight, Chair Paisley. Mr. Carver, thank you. Ms. Thompson. Um, boy, these meetings, they, they're tough. Um, as a county commissioner, to me, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican or unaffiliated. I, I work for all of you. And I'm going to listen to all of you. I met somebody at a coffee shop Sunday, and I'm so glad I did because they really helped me. And if I don't listen, then I don't get the big picture. And big picture is what we all need to have. Um, I want to thank you all for coming and using your voice to speak up for what you are so passionate about. I was at church yesterday, and we did the graduation program of our young people graduating from high school and college. I saw the pictures of them as little bitty kids and many pictures of them all grown up now. I was in tears and didn't have a kid graduating, but I have had three to graduate. The pictures were into the best heartfelt music. I saw sports pictures, prom pictures, awards pictures, academic pictures, dance pictures, camping and fishing pictures, pictures with siblings, parents, friends, and grandparents, all the parts of kids growing into an adult. And then now, the next step after high school. Whether that next step is the military, community college, university, workforce, whatever, teachers, coaches, social workers, counselors, principals, nurses, and so many more are the very reason they're able to wear that cap and gown and move forward. That is school and all that goes with it, and wow, does it go so fast, it just flies. So here we are at this famous budget meeting when everyone comes into this meeting and stands up for what they believe. Just thank you. You speak with your heart because you love your kids. You want the best for the next generation and you love your community. So why does it seem to be so complicated sometimes? It's almost like a tug of war. It's no secret where I stand with um, student services. They can be life-saving. One nurse per 833 students. The ideal school nurse to student ratio in the United States is one nurse for every 750 students. In 2022, the average ratio for North Carolina schools was one nurse, like I said, per 833. In 2023, 74% of those North Carolina schools had formal plans in place to address staffing ratios, but only 30% fully addressed the issue. You know, a medical crisis is never convenient as to when that nurse is on site for a couple of hours that he or she is spread among four schools. Let's all imagine going to ARMC, the emergency room, intensive care, obstetrics, or any surgery and recovery. And we have to wait because they too have one nurse per 833 patients. It also is no secret how I feel about the condition of our buildings. It is a constant battle. This year I've heard from the virtual school and of the virtual school. If your child is in the virtual school to your family, it is as real as a brick and mortar school. It is where they feel they belong. I'm watching the North Carolina General Assembly give out hundreds of millions of dollars so parents can have their school of choice funded. I agree fully with choice. This is America. So to be honest, the virtual school is too about choice. Just want to be fair. Charter, Christian, private, they too are choice. Public school, choice. Does it all up to 21 years of age and refuses no one. 
There are so many amazing programs under student services that make it all possible for children with many different circumstances. Just a reminder, children are being picked up by an ABSS school bus while living at Motel 6 and Econa Lodge due to a federally funded program called McKinney Vento. That is their reality. In America, we all have a right to our opinion when it comes to children, our children. However, moving the problem doesn't necessarily solve the problem. So maybe the source of the problem is where we should start instead of running from it. Get all the power and politics and elections out of the way and focus 100% on teachers and children and their real needs. They deserve our commitment. The solution is not easy, but we have to be strong enough to realize where we are. We must do better by our kids. You know, I, I personally still have many questions concerning the commercial property tax thing that we went through as well. Everywhere you look in Alamance County, there is growth. So much construction in town and out of town. Housing developments seem to drop out of the sky and holy cow, all the apartment complexes. Where are all these folks coming from? Do they spend their money here? With all these folks, that will mean more services and that equals more cost. Remember the school bus accident on Highway 87 South and all the children laying on tarps in the, gra in the grass who had to wait on emergency services for at least 45 minutes or because we are understaffed. <sighs> Do we have to have a dead kid to really understand this? We see big industry as we drive through our county on Interstate 40. It, it this just, just don't add up to me. So I want us to really think hard about what we're looking at because it's not just the schools, it's everything. And we're, like I've said many times, at a real crossroads where we want everybody to come here, we want everybody to live here because I think we are a smoking hot county. If you hadn't been to Cedar Rock Park and see that new playground, go. It is phenomenal. And that took a lot of folks making a collaboration with matching grants and all kind of stuff and a lot of hard work for Parks and Recreation. We have what it takes to be amazing. I think we already are. We just have to really believe that and have vision. Vision is a must. It says in scripture, a people with no vision will surely die. You gotta have vision, not just what's in front of your face. So I just appreciate you all coming. It's, it's every year. And I just, I just told Tori, I said, people should not have to come here and ask to raise their taxes to get what we've got to have. We gotta look at a lot more different things. So I just appreciate you coming. I wish it was so many people. All of Graham was just packed with people because in this, till we have that strength to where we really work together and have power in unity, that's when we'll, we'll do well because I want people to move here because we're awesome, not because we're cheap. So I, I appreciate you all coming. I appreciate my commissioners. This is gonna be one of the hardest things we've done. And we say that every year because it gets harder. So let's just, I'll pray for each other and just hope that we do what is right by our children who are going to run this world one day, and we better have them ready. Mr. Lashley. Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> I'm going to ask everybody in the audience a question. And if you know the answer, please say it out loud. Does anyone know what the county taxpayers are responsible for as far as schools are concerned? Does anyone know that question? Let's hear it. Please, it's it's open it's open up for discussion here. I was gonna ask the county manager if she would tell us what the answer is. I have that handy. It's interesting that you asked me that. Let me get it real quick. I was just looking at it. Here's what general statutes would say counties are responsible for funding. Uh, school facilities, furniture and apparatus, buildings for bus and vehicle storage, library, science and classroom equipment, water supply and sanitary facilities, and keeping school buildings in good repair. Oh, there's one more. Statutes, statutes also explicitly assign some funding responsibility for operational expenditures. These are specifically for school maintenance and repairs, instructional supplies and reference books, school property insurance, and fire inspections. 
It says nothing in there about teacher pay. Alamance County taxpayers give a gift to the teachers each and every year. It's called a teacher supplement. They do not have to do that. Alamance County taxpayers do that out of the goodness of their heart. I just wanted everyone to realize that there's a lot of things that we were that were, were said today that are nowhere close to what the obligation of the Alamance County taxpayer is, and that's our obligation is to, to them. They're the one that's going to pay the bill. The only reason I bring that up, I heard some folks tonight say about the virtual school. I think the virtual school is a great idea. I think it's a great idea. I think the only question I would ask, ask you is why didn't the school board put it in their budget if it was such an important part of educating the students, as we were told, a 30% decrease in the budget? This is a question you have to ask yourself, because that's what I intend to ask, uh, why that wasn't put in there. The reason I bring it up, you have 210 students at this school at a cost of $500,000. Now, there's some other costs there that weren't talked about tonight, and I don't want to get into the weeds. But $2,500 to educate those kids is probably a pretty good way to go. And as we heard tonight from the um, of, uh, River Mill and some, some of their charter schools, that's about the cost of educating their kids. Like you said, there's some things that they don't have to pay for that they chose not to, but they don't have any capital expenditures that they actually pass on to the taxpayers. They take care of those capital expenditures themselves. They raise money, they do bake sales, they do yard sales, do everything else, and that's why they were able to go out and buy two new school buses for cash. Things like that are really important, really big when it comes to funding schools. I just wanted to ask why some folks believe that taking vouchers away. Now, vouchers are as a way that I heard several folks tonight say something about vouchers. Vouchers are a way that the state has decided that the money should follow the child. And that money follows the kid wherever he or she goes. And we should look at that, those vouchers as an indictment, almost, of our school system. Because I just found out on Thursday, 581 students are no longer going to come to ABSS because they found a better way. Found a better way. And that's America. That is America in, it, in essence. I... I believe that the, the, the county's recommended budget, the county manager's recommended budget, was a good start. I think you did a good job, Heidi. Uh, the only thing, and I've had this conversation with Commissioner Carter, the only thing I don't really like about it is it goes against a lot of things that I was taught in business, that you don't use your savings account to balance your budget. And Mr. Vines nailed, hit, hit on something tonight that I think everyone should just pay attention to. It's if you continue to use your savings account to pay your bills, it's not going to be too long and you're going to be in a world of hurt. You're just going to be in a world of hurt. So we need to stay away from that. And I think that if we were to go ahead and, and be honest with ourselves, that the real rate is five and a half pennies. That's how much your tax rate would go up, five and a half pennies. If we were... We have used that fund balance before, and that fund balance has helped us out. We have not had to use that money. And the way I look at it as a trader is, that's my stop number. The bad number is the, is the two, two pennies, but the worst it's ever, the worst it's gonna get is five and a half pennies. That's, that's if something bad happens, that's the worst it's gonna be. I just wanna make those couple of comments. I know it went a little longer than even I intended to. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that the, um, what the Alamance County taxpayer is responsible for. And the reason I bring it up again is because that's who I'm responsible to, is the citizens and the taxpayers of this county. And if things get out of whack, they're going to come yelling at me. So I uh, just thank everyone for coming out tonight. I want to thank 
the kids who came out to speak. I'm very proud of you all. There's some things that I agreed with, and there's some things I didn't agree with, but I'm just so thankful that at your age that you're out there getting involved in this process. It does everybody a great service. Just want to thank you so much for doing that. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm finished. Thank you. Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is, uh, this is our fourth budget as a, as a board. It seems like every year the budget's harder. Um, and one of the reasons is that costs are going up, inflation's going up, it's affecting the county just as, as well as everybody else. Uh, and sales tax revenue is not going up, not like it used to. Uh, and I think this year it's probably going to be flat. In addition, we've got some hits to our Medicaid hold homeless payments from the state, which is impacting revenue as well. So this is a harder budget. Um, so we've, got, we've still got some work to do. Um, we had a budget session last week with, uh, with ABSS and ACC. We had some, some tough questions for them to get into the, the details on their budget request. I've still got some more questions um, for ABSS and ACC as well. We've got some hard questions to ask the county. We've got two budget sessions coming up with the county. We've got some hard questions, uh, and we need to work through some stuff there, too. We're not done. I'm not done. Uh, and we, we need to uh, keep working uh, on this budget. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming out tonight and participating in the process. Uh, thank you to everyone who's, you know, seen me on the street corner or talked to me at the Carousel Festival or called or emailed. Um, this works best when people are involved in the process and telling us what you think, because it does matter. Uh, and a special thank you to the ABS students who came out. You know, I was, I graduated from Williams in 91. I, I felt like I pretty much, I was a pretty active kid. I knew what was going on in the world, but I would not have come to a county commissioner meeting and, <laughs> and voiced my concerns about my, my school. I wouldn't have done that. See, that takes a lot of courage, uh, and I really appreciate you guys coming out. It says a lot about who you are and about what your parents expect of you and uh, that they're here supporting you too. So thank you, everybody, for coming out. We've got work to do. Thanks. In closing remarks, I am so impressed with you virtual school students that are here tonight and that were here two weeks ago. Um, just extremely impressive. Uh, I agree with Mr. Turner. I don't think I'd had the guts to stand <laughs> at a county commissioner's meeting uh, and do what you folks did. Um, we do have the materials that, on the virtual school, and we county commissioners will look at those. And I plan to call this gentleman back, who is one of our speakers, and gain further information. Um, now, having said that, um, most speakers um, every single year complain about not enough money you county commissioners and uh, look at us as if we are uh, low rent, if there's such a term, uh, below you know, whatever, and it's just not so. As Mr. Carter pointed out and Mr. Lashley pointed out, we have fully funded the school system every single year up until this year, and we have not set the budget yet for this year. Yeah, so you don't have a clue um, what we're going to do at this point. Um, as Ms. York pointed out, we are not responsible for all this extra money and monies that we're giving to the school board. We do that because we care about you parents and we care about you students. And we, you know, I had four kids go through the school system. Um, as a result of going through this school system, uh, two, not only, all four graduated from college uh, at the top of their classes, uh, but two have doctorates and two have MBAs beyond college. And that's what the school system can do for you. Uh, at the same time, I have two grandchildren that were homeschooled and graduated with from high school with two advanced degrees from ACC. While being homeschooled, they took courses at Elon College um, and, and ACC and so forth. So the virtual school is an alternative to just going Monday through Friday to the public school normal classroom situation. Uh, and I encourage you to look at it. And if it's in your best interest, to do it. Uh, 
Now, having said that, the two that were homeschooled, one has a four-year degree in completing her, her PhD, her doctorate, and the other just completed law school, uh, number one in his class um, in law school. So you can do it. Don't set your goals too low. Now, having been bad mouth, and <laughs> that's where I started this uh, little dialogue, uh, two of the roofs, Graham High School and Southern High School, which appeared on Channel 2, Channel 8, Channel 12, Channel 11, with leaking roofs, all the time they were showing those videos, they had in the bank, ABSS, your school system, $5 million set aside separately for each of those schools, and not a single contract had been entered by the school system. I think to a large degree that has been corrected. You've hired Mr. Greg Hook as your operations manager, and he is making a difference. So we're seeing school roofs repaired that we set aside money for years ago. $5 million for each of was in hand with the school system in 2022. 22, 23, 24. Huh. So what's going on there? And a lot of those things you see on TV and hear us being badmouthed about is not our doing. We cannot make the school system do anything. If they repair a roof, that's on them. We provide the money. But you need to be talking to the school board members, not the county commissioners, about that work product not being complete. And I would really request you do that. Uh, we have an election coming up November 5th, and unfortunately you, uh, you got your kids can't vote yet, but you will vote, and your parents can vote now. It's not only county commissioners up for election, but it's also school board members. So find out who, in fact, is causing delays and what you can do to encourage those that are in office or those that will be in office to do their jobs. Uh, and you guys, virtual school folks, talk to your parents. It's just the thing to do. Um, Ms. Short uh, is recommending a budget for us that goes from a 20% uh, reserves, which is what the state likes and requests us to do. Um, her proposed budget will take us down to 17%. And that has a negative impact upon bonds. It has a ne negative impact upon a lot of things, including ABS's ability, school sets ability to borrow money and for future repairs. So I agree with Mr. Lashley. I'm really afraid to go from 20% to 17. But again, we have not passed our budget. Uh, Talk to folks, don't talk to just the person that's complaining. Actually, go out there, find facts, call the school board members, get their perspective. They're honest people, they're not gonna lie to you, um, but ask them why Southern High and Graham High were shown as leaking roofs when they had the money sitting in their bank account. Ask them that question and encourage them to spend the money that's been set aside for you, not only virtual school, but all school, school st uh, students, and spend the money wisely. You do have an interim superintendent. Uh, he's talking to you <coughs> along with the chair uh, on a regular basis, and we are really trying to work together. And I, again, ask, beg, pray for those joint meetings and we have once a month oversight meetings that uh, ACC and you virtual school students take advantage of ACC. You can wind up with advanced degrees when you complete high school. You'll enter college possibly as sophomores or juniors and get in some of the best schools in North Carolina. So I would encourage you to do that. Guys, I said more than I meant to. Thank you, and I really appreciate everyone that's here.
Uh, Chairman, I was going to ask the county attorney to do me a favor. You mentioned earlier about you did some research about some of the things with the, um, I don't know. The Renew America's Schools Prize? Yes. I just yes. want you to go ahead and repeat that since we have everyone here. We have school board members here so the folks here can talk to the school board members about how they can go about it. you got 10 days. Absolutely. I'll be happy to send this information along to the folks at the schools, but it looks like a, a Department of Energy, the U.S. Department of Energy uh, program. But one of the requirements that's clearly laid out here is that the applicant has to be a local educational agency. Um, partnering with a nonprofit of some sort. So I do think it seems like a viable option, but it's just not one that the county can undertake. So I'll be happy to send this along to the schools. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. It. Can you post it on our website? Uh, I think we could, but I'll be happy to send it to the schools and see if they want us to do that. Thank you. More than anything else? All right. Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? We're out of session. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.local.gov.com govtvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on Local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.